Now on Sunrise, millions of Minnesotans told to stay home. We take a closer look at what this order from the governor means for you. Then, lawmakers on Capitol Hill banding together to fight a common enemy. To put aside our differences, to do something really significant for the country. What's next for the $2 trillion coronavirus aid bill and whether you'll see a check in your mailbox. Then hospitals transforming into a battleground to help fight the coronavirus. We sit down with a doctor on how the industry is changing as his colleagues rush to the front lines. A cooler start to your Thursday. The rain is done for now, but we've got more in the forecast, but also some warmer temps and sunshine. It's Thursday, March 26. CARE 11 Sunrise starts now. Take what you need, leave what you can. One Minneapolis woman is taking the little free library idea and turning it into a little free pantry. So we want to know, what are you doing to help those people in need? Let us know using the hashtag SendTheLove and hashtag Sunrisers. We'll share your message in about 15 minutes. Gia, some pretty awesome ideas despite the circumstances, don't you think? Oh, I love it. I know. I have a lot of those free libraries in my neighborhood, but I haven't actually looked in them to see if they've been converted to pantries. But what an awesome idea, Chris. Yeah, you'll definitely have to see what's inside those. As you can see, Gia working from home as we continue to social distance. Alicia also working from home. We'll catch up with her in a minute. First, though, let's get you caught up on the weather. Waking up to clouds, Sven. Any more rain coming? Well, actually... We've got uh, some mostly clear skies for the moment. Yeah, the clouds are going to be back pretty quickly, though. You can see, though, just the beginnings of that sunrise. If you want to see that, get out there. 7.03, uh, the sun is up. So just about 30 minutes, we should see it, most of it. Uh, clouds are going to race back in. But yeah, soggy one yesterday. We do have more rain on the way for Saturday. 31 hundredths of an inch of rain picked up yesterday. And there's some more showers across northern Iowa this morning. A nearly stationary band of some showers. It's going to try to wander into southern Minnesota. We should stay dry here, though, but it is cold below freezing across the metro this morning. Upper 40s this afternoon, but mostly cloudy later on. Yeah, watch for a little bit of that refreeze out on the roadways after that rain came in. And of course, as you heard from Sven, we're below freezing this morning, but giving you a look at the roads here on our metro map, no crashes, no delays. There are a few construction projects taking place this weekend. All more details on those coming up in just a few minutes. Thanks, Alicia. We're tracking the latest overnight in the battle against the coronavirus. Here are the top headlines you need to know. The coronavirus racing past a deadly milestone in the U.S. It's now responsible for more than 1,000 deaths and 69,000 people infected. In Wisconsin, the governor is extending his safer at home order until April 24th. Here in Minnesota, 287 Minnesotans have tested positive for coronavirus. One person has died. To slow down the virus from spreading here in Minnesota, the governor has issued a stay home order starting tomorrow. It will last until April 10th. Now, this is not a lockdown. You can still go outside, go grocery shopping, even get gas and go to the bank, even get takeout. But you are urged not to socialize in big groups or go to work unless your job is deemed essential. If you break this order, the state does not plan to arrest or cite you. The governor is also extending restrictions on bars, restaurants and entertainment venues to May 1st and school distance learning will continue until May 4th. Well, while most of you were sleeping, the U.S. Senate unanimously passed that massive stimulus bill. Um, it would mean $2 trillion for coronavirus relief. Uh, Kai Edwards is live in St. Louis Park with what's next, Kaya? Hi, Gia. Good morning. The bill now heads to the House, which is expected to vote tomorrow. And it includes billions of dollars in credit for industries hurting from the pandemic, including businesses like the ones here in West End St. Louis Park that have had to close and really all over the Twin Cities. This bill also includes direct payments for individuals and for families. And for there is also, excuse me, a boost to unemployment insurance. Now, shortly after the Senate approved the bill last night, Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell said he was proud that it passed with bipartisanship. And Senate Minority Leader Chuck Schumer said he believes this bill will get across the finish line. Coming together entirely, a hundred of us, to meet this challenge, I think says a lot about the United States Senate as an institution. From Bernie Sanders to Toomey, Pat Toomey, people came together to help the American people. Again, the fate of this bill now rests in the House, and President Trump has said he would sign it once it reaches his desk. Back to you. 
Yeah, and it sounds like the House is set to pass it as well, Kaya. Thank you. Alicia, people want to know what this means for their family, so you're uh, breaking that down for us in the digital dive. Yeah, Dia, as part of this relief package, a lot of us are going to be getting a check from the government, but just how much is a good question. I'm going to break it down for you this morning. In the bill, individual adults will receive $1,200 and married couples will get $2,400. For each eligible child, you get another $500. And if you make less than $75,000 a year, you're going to get the full amount. That's the, that's the same for couples that make less than $150,000 a year. If you earn more than that, the amount is going to get phased out. And if you make more than $99,000 a year, you're not going to get anything. Married couples without kids making more than 198,000, not gonna get any money either. Now under the bill, furloughed and unemployed workers get whatever amount a state usually provides for unemployment, plus another 600 bucks a week. That all sounds great, but when are we gonna actually see this money in our bank account? So yesterday, Senator Chuck Schumer said that President Trump wants the payments out in less than two weeks, which is April 6th. But that might be a tough goal to hit. Democratic aides told the New York Times that if you have direct deposit info already filed with the IRS, your payment could come in a few weeks after the bill becomes law. If the IRS doesn't have that info on file, you might wait several months for a physical paycheck. And there nearly 500 people have already commented on the story on our Facebook page, like Gretchen here who thinks this is not awesome. I just don't really think it's going to help people long term. It's more of a cushion than a blow, a band-aid. Yeah, she's not happy with this. Rose said, it's a week or two of missed wages. It's not going to go very far. And maybe you're feeling like Amy who said, I'll believe it when I see it. So if you want to read more about the story in the stimulus package, you can head to our website, care11.com. And gee, I feel like at least it's something, right? We're getting a little bit of something. Yeah, it sounds like, um, to me, I mean, anything helps right now for a lot of these people who have really lost their jobs or work hours have been cut back. Um, yeah, but long term, I want to see how this goes as well. Thanks, Alicia. Well, new information about the coronavirus is coming out constantly, and you can stay on top of it by texting virus to 763-797-7215. You'll get a link with our coverage sent straight to your phone. You can also text questions to that number, and we'll try to find an answer for you. Chris, over to you in the studio. Now time for your morning rush. MSP Airport typically serves thousands of passengers each day, but with the coronavirus, it's a much different story. Check out the scene yesterday. Security checkpoints were nearly empty. Airport officials say the number of flight cancellations is increasing every day. The number of people being screened at security checkpoints is down 85% compared to this time last year. We're learning more this morning about the future of the Olympics. The International Olympic Committee president says the games could happen as early as spring 2021. Timing is difficult because the games involve 33 international sports federations. The games, set to begin in July, are postponed because of coronavirus. Race for the Cure is going to look a little bit different this year. The annual event that raises funds for breast cancer programs will now be done virtually with remote participation. You're asked to run or walk around the neighborhood or even use a treadmill. Race for the Cure is scheduled for May 10th. Race t-shirts and bibs will be mailed. And the Gophers may not be holding spring practice practices, but that's not stopping preparations for next season. Coach PJ Flack tells CARE 11 he's been holding virtual meetings every day with the team. He's even been on a digital recruiting trail, talking with athletes and their families. And that's your Thursday morning rush. Sven, it's Thursday. We need to know the one thing weather. We sure do. We do every day, though. Uh, temperatures are below freezing this morning. A little ice on uh, the top of those puddles from yesterday. Cloudy most of the day, but we are going to see the sun rise at least for the moment. Uh, upper 40s. Dry tomorrow too, but we're talking about more rain in the forecast coming up. As you heard from Sven, watch that refreeze out on the roadways, but it's pretty quiet here around the metro. No crashes right now, and drive times are looking pretty good still. Thanks, Alicia. Well, we know a lot of stores are closed because of coronavirus concerns, but Minnesotans are finding ways to give back to their local bookstores. Ellie McArdle shows us the good happening in our community. Minnesota bookstores are feeling the effects of coronavirus. Shops are closed up, events with authors are postponed and canceled, in-store cafes are shut down, but Minnesotans are keeping these stores busy with online orders. 
At Moon Palace Books in Minneapolis, stacks of orders are coming in. The shop posted on its Facebook page last week saying, so busy, so grateful. At Cream and Amber in Hopkins, they're feeling the love too. The owners are thanking the community for ordering food, drinks, and books, of course. On our Sunrisers Book Club page on Facebook, we asked how you're supporting your local bookstore. Michaela says she ordered books from Majors and Quinn in Uptown. Minnesota author Annika Fajardo says she bought an audiobook. With all the extra time at home, Minnesotans are finding things to do, and they know where to find their next great read. Ellery McArdle, Care 11 News. Yeah, and we are looking for our next uh, book club pick. So let us know if you have any suggestions. Just join our Sunrisers Book Club. It's hashtag Sunrisers Book Club on Facebook. Chris, do you have any suggestions for us? No, I don't actually. I was going to come to you guys because I'm looking for something to read. We all have a little more time nowadays, so maybe I'll check out the book club. You guys offer <laughs> suggestions? We do. We take suggestions, of course. So um, let us know. Just join our Sunrises Book Club page. And Chris, hey, we're also asking if people have um, a positive short story to share. Let us know using the hashtag, hashtag send the love. All right. We'd love to hear those. Thanks, Gia. Doctors pushing the limits of their expertise to aid in the fight against the coronavirus. We talked to a healthcare professional on his experience with this pandemic. Then coronavirus, not the only issue this morning in the south. Storms devastating parts of Mississippi. We have new video of the damage. And exercising faith in a time when people need it the most. The divisive ideas different religious leaders are sharing on how to practice your religion. 